Oh boy, there we are. Literally, I just came back running to go get a cup of coffee. How you doing there, friends? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time it might be in your part of the world, welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz, and today we're going to be learning a little bit of C-sharp with C-sharp Fritz. That's me. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. This is the start of a a new series, a new set of videos that we're going to do here together. This time we're going to be talking about .NET MAUI. Um, this, is, this is the new framework on the block. This is the new one that folks are interested in learning about, folks are a little wary about, and, and it's growing. It's new. It's, it's evolving. There's a lot to happen here, and uh, we're excited to see where it goes. So let me, let me welcome in the chat room here. Let me bring in the, the chat. There's a bunch of folks already here. Let's, let's do that. Where is it? Is it? There they are, right there. Hello, hello. Welcome in, friends. Uh, Strug is here from snowy Moscow. I hope you're having a good afternoon, a good early evening there. Um, how you doing there, Schmikey in on YouTube? Ma Marilo is here from Brazil. Welcome in. Thindal on Twitch is here. Uh, yeah, we're having a pretty good day. I got back, so I was away this weekend. I got back, and it turns out the cat was in here and playing with my curtains and things. And um, as as cats do, nothing was in the same place that I left it. We'll see. Um, Ozzy is here. Ozzy, is it Ozzy Trady on YouTube? Um, Pump for the the next series. Got the Quest Pro setting up the PC connection for coding in mixed reality. Very cool stuff. Um, I do enjoy coding in mixed reality. I've been using a, a tool um, called Immersive VR. I haven't, I haven't gone back to it in a few months. I've been very busy with some other things. Uh, and we're going to talk about those things in just a second. So I, I need to get back in there. Haven't gotten the Quest Pro. I have a Quest 2. I think I could still call this the Oculus Quest because when I bought it, it was Oculus. And it says Oculus on the box. And I've got all the Oculus branding. So, right, this is the, the Oculus Quest. Now they call it Meta Quest. So I've got the extra battery backup on the back for uh, coding another immersive mixed reality sessions it's very interesting to do that but it, it can strain your eyes a little bit not gonna lie very very cool to do um how you doing there future tech nat sack hello there on twitch s4p0 greetings to you in brazil welcome in c family lang hello hello on youtube sergey is here from sydney australia nat sack is here from sydney as well my goodness a lot of folks from Australia, I hope you're having a very good evening. I know it's late there. Uh, really appreciate you tuning in. Um, I'm doing well. So Saturday wasn't a very good sports day for, for us. We were going into the weekend thinking, in sport, we've got tremendous upside here for folks that are fans in the city of Philadelphia. Um, and we lost just about everything on Saturday. Our Flyers lost in hockey. Uh, our Penn State Nittany Lions lost in football to a very good Ohio State team that was ranked by some as number one in the country. So an expected loss, but very competitive into the fourth quarter of, of that match. Um, a, a disappointing loss, to be sure, for the faithful that were right there from the get-go. That evening, I went to the women's volleyball game once again against those same Ohio State Buckeyes, and it took them to five sets. Um, and they were ranked higher than us. I forget the women's volleyball rankings. Um, and lost to them 17-15 on the fifth set. Went to extra points on four of the five sets and, and lost by a total of seven points across it. Oh, oh, brutal. Just rough. Um but I think we made up for that in Philadelphia sports on Sunday with a big Philadelphia Eagles win and uh, our Philadelphia Union advancing to the MLS Cup to the final of the knockout round of uh, Major League Soccer here in North America. Very exciting for us. But uh, Union already qualified for Champions League here in North America. We call it CONCACAF. Uh, so we'll be playing against folks from Canada, Mexico, Central America. Very exciting. Uh, folks from Philadelphia aren't used to our teams playing against champions from other countries. 
So it's a unique experience for Philadelphia fans. How you doing there? Billy Cool. Good to see you. Uh, is that Thapolo is here from South Africa? Hello there. Jorge from Spain. See, some of you folks from Brazil and Spain and South Africa, you're used to your football teams playing internationally against other teams from other countries. Uh, here in Philadelphia, it's, it's still new to us. So uh, very exciting for us to see. C Family Lang is from Lebanon. Welcome. Um, is that Tokeni? is here from Switzerland. Good to see you. Asaf from South Africa. Hello, hello. Segovia from Venezuela. Good to see you. Vladimir is here from Moscow. How's it going? Um, Eric, uh, hello to you in Florida. So I want to make sure something's, something is is clear that if, if it's not clear here, um, we're talking tech. That's We want to stay on topic with tech here. I know there's there's a lot of things that are going on in various parts of the world. That's not a topic for discussion here. I want to make sure that everybody feels welcome. We can talk and learn about tech together. Everybody gets an opportunity to, to chat and discuss the things about, about technology, about the, the samples we're going to look at today. Um, I, I don't want anybody to feel um, intimidated in any way, okay? So I just want to make sure I lay those ground rules from the start here. Um, Daniel's here from Sunny Essex in the UK. Um, Fantastic. That's it, my goodness. I think we're getting, we, we've got just about all the continents covered at this point. Hello to you, the sim racers in Scotland. Happy time zone peoples. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good afternoon to all our friends that are dialing in from Africa and Europe. And of course, those of you in, in Asia and Australia, hope you're having a good evening. My, my goodness. It's a very late evening for some of you. Uh, hello. Rita is here on Twitch from Berlin. Good to see you. Uh, is it Metahan from Turkey? Good. Good to see you. Aussie trading. It is an awesome headset. I do enjoy the MetaQuest headsets. They've struck a nice balance between affordability and functionality. Um, they've done a nice job there. Um, is it Michael from Brazil? Good to see you. Uh, Sherix from Russia. How's it going there? Steven is here. Hello on YouTube. Hope I'm doing well. Greetings to you in Melbourne, Australia. Yeah, very late evening there in Melbourne. Um, a very cool streamer uses a HoloLens on his off-stream time for coding. Ooh, that's that's tricky. Projecting three screens in the air in front of him. That's what I enjoy about using immersive. And now, and now the Quest software has that same screen replication capability built in. So I think there's there's definitely something to this for us as developers to be able to code with larger screens, many more of them in in virtual mixed reality space there's something coming there for us as developers i i can't put my finger on it yet because it, it still feels weird it still feels like either the refresh rate on the headset or sometimes even your head gets confused uh looking around and the balance um and and it, you may feel a little sick while you're working in in mixed reality space um, it's something that I, I feel like when refresh rates, resolution gets, it, it, it ticks right over 1920, 1080 per eye. And we get past 60 frames a second regularly per eye. I feel like we're going to be in a place where it might be acceptable health wise, maybe not socially acceptable, but it's acceptable health wise to be able to code for longer uh, longer stretches in mixed reality. We're getting there. We, we definitely are getting there as, as a technology. Uh, Tarun, hello to you. M uh, Michael is here from, uh, or is it, uh, yeah, Michael from Czech Republic. Hello, Anton. Am I not afraid that a battery pack might explode while on my head? Uh, no, I'm not afraid of that at all. No. Um, it, I, I check the, the state of the battery pack when I put it on, make sure there isn't any swelling. If there was, I would replace it with go back to the regular strap, but no, I, I don't have any concerns with that. Um, hello to you. I, I'm sorry. I can't, I, I can't read the script there in uh, Tamil Nadu. Welcome. Horatio in Romania. Oh, yeah. We're having a great day. Rough weekend for Michigan state Spartan fans. Ah, uh, Zachary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mauricio. Um, says, hello, Blazer or XAML for my next project with Maui? Depends. See, so th this is one of the questions we need to discuss, and we'll talk about it in just a little bit here. 
Uh, is it Clarice? Hello to you in France. Um, how long? How long will I keep on streaming for .NET Maui? So I'll be here for two days to two hours, two hours today. I think we're only going to go maybe four to six episodes. I'm off next week for .NET Conf. Um, I'll be back for a week, and then I think I'm off the following week for American Thanksgiving, and then we're running right up against December, and we'll see how things go. Um, just say India. All right, hello to you, Anshul in India. Um, good afternoon uh, to Sharaf in Egypt. Fantastic, yes. It, I try to, it, these Monday morning streams have been a little bit tricky. I had everything all set up last week, and, and some stuff just didn't click quite right before we got started. Um, uh, Santa Cruz, Bolivia is where Jose is. Regards to you, Sergio, in Mexico. Hello to Tarun in India. Um, uh, 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 is it Aboskin from Tajikistan? Good to see you. Um, V188, hello to you in Croatia. Good evening, Natesh in India. Uh, Jose is here from Santa Cruz, Bolivia. Ruslan from Belarus. Finally, some .NET Maui stuff. We're only going to take a look at the very basics and discuss a little bit about what it is, why you would choose it, how you get involved, how you get started. Take a look at some of the options. There's already questions about Blazor versus XAML. I'll tell you where I sit in that discussion, and and we'll figure out some next steps from there. Uh, Mohammed is here. He's a de they're a developer, application developer from Iraq. Well, welcome. Uh, Ozzy, for me, tr doing mixed reality work in VR, being able to see my work in real time is the dream. Yeah, I think folks that are building mixed reality solutions, to be able to do that in a mixed reality headset is is a pretty pretty compelling solution. Quite simple note. Hello to you in Ukraine. Um, Alejandro asks, Blazor Maui versus only Maui. Is there a real difference in performance? Not really a difference in performance, no. Um, I, th I think there's... There's a discussion to be had there, and I think there's comfort levels where folks are going to look at this, and you may actually lean towards Blazor with Maui. Um, is that uh, Haishono from Lillehammer, Norway? Hello to you. Um, Vinicius in Brazil. We're sad for Xamarin, but hopeful for Maui. Uh, totally agree. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about... Um, We'll talk a little bit about that to get started here. Uh, Wolfkin asks, can I rewatch rewatch your past live streams? Yes. They're, you're watching on YouTube. If you go, you're on YouTube, you're on youtube.com slash dot net. Check out the playlists up at the top. Scroll down, look for Learn C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz. Uh, I think there's 50 or 60 videos there that you can scan through um, and take a look at. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Kelvin is here from Germany. Uh, uh, Alok is here from Nepal. Good to see you. Hey, how's it going there, the Sim Racers? Uh, Stephen asks, "Will I be developing using a Mac?" At some point, I need to on this stream. So, um, not today, but I will get it set up, and we will be doing that at some point here. You're you're very welcome there, Wolfkin. And please let me know if I'm pronouncing that right. I saw the umlaut and. And it's probably not Wolfchen, it's probably Volchen, uh, uh, interpreting that as German and uh, Fritz, a guy named Fritz is going to try to pronounce German properly. You know what I'm saying? Um, Jim.exe is looking at a half day today. Great timing. Oh, fantastic. How are you doing there, M. Pulowski on Twitch? Good to see you as well. Tice. Hey, Fritz, looking forward to the series. What can we expect from this series around .NET MAUI? Any online capabilities and such or more basic app building? Um, what do you mean by online capabilities? Let's ask that question. What does that mean? Are you looking for how to do, how to build network interactions? Um, we're definitely going to hit network APIs as we build an application here. Are you, are you talking about building some sort of a network based game or something like that where you can communicate and do a little bit of, um, real time interactions? That might be just a little bit too far for this type of basic level series. But definitely making queries to a, a remote service that will deploy, 
we could deploy out to a cloud, a public cloud like Microsoft Azure, and be able to present that data, oh, that's very much in the cards. That's very much something that we'll take a look at. Um, yes, the sim racers using REST implementations. Um, REST, gRPC, I think those are all on the table. As, as we look forward and we think about what... Um, as we think about what a uh, uh, demo app might look like that we'll build here live together on stream, it might make sense to try and extend the the sample we built last time around our collections um, to build a mobile app that goes with that collection website, so that you can you can show your friends. Here's my collection. It's right here on my phone, but it's all stored in the cloud. Be able to take pictures of items in your collection, upload them directly from your phone or tablet device, um, I think that might be a, a pretty cool continuation of demos from the last series that we had. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it, and and to be fair, I'm writing the series as we go here, right? I'm, I'm taking your feedback, questions that, that viewers have, and building as we go. Today's, today's, uh, today's episode is is it an episode? Today's video is very um, going to be very basic. Just talk about the basics. Get in and talk about what .NET Maui is. Look at what some of the sample code is that's generated from from our templates. Talk about the difference between XAML and Blazor with respect to .NET Maui. Why you might choose each um, these things to get us started. Literally just scratching the surface. Just getting started. Um, and we'll see where it goes from there. I know there's, th there's sometimes folks that are very interested in the topics that I present. There's some folks that get a little bit aggressive around some of the topics that I'm presenting. Let's see where it goes. Let me, let me see where things land here and we'll figure out and go from there. Um, so I think... I think I've got, got a, a couple of images, a couple of items in the readme out here. I didn't quite finish the notes and things that I wanted to discuss to introduce a little bit of the topic. Um, I certainly don't have links back to the docs embedded the way I normally do here. I really need to make a, a pass through the GitHub repository and update, update and test everything and um, check all my links, all that stuff. But we're going to get into that in just a little bit. We're doing an AMA for the next 23 minutes or so here. And and we'll continue from there. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Hard to describe the correct pronunciation. I pronounced it as wrong as most Americans do. Oh, oh. I, I see the, the O umlaut and the W. And I it, yeah, I want to say Wolfkin. Um, so, all right. I, I tried. At least I didn't call you Wolf. Right, that's that's I know that's right out. Um, Sumit, how you doing? There is Sumit asks a question here: Is Maui good to make an application that uses maps, something like a slimmer version of Uber? Uh, yes, there is there there are capabilities with the um, with the uh, Maui Community Toolkit that give you access to the maps capabilities on all the devices. So from the demos, from the talks that our friends on the Maui team have given, I would say yes. Have I used the maps features? No, not yet. But from what I've seen, from what I've been told, it, it certainly works, and that is something that you can do. Um, and that's going to be a challenge with a lot of the things here on Maui, is this isn't my primary development framework. This is, quite frankly, my third or fourth development framework down the line that I'm not typically using regularly. So some of the tools, some of the components, I'm just not familiar with, and I'm going to have to defer and come back and answer questions another time on. But getting getting started, getting working with it, getting folks up and, and how it integrates with the other pieces, I definitely have experience with and will be good to talk about. Um, continuing here, Dolo DE, good morning to you. Happy Halloween. Yes, it is. It is Halloween here. I, I don't try to make the, the date of these recordings incredibly obvious. It is Halloween. Um, all the best to those out there that are celebrating and having a good time this evening, wherever it is you might be. 
Um, yeah, but whether you're you're going to a party, your go your kids are going out and trick or treating or whatever it might be that that you're doing to have fun this evening. I hope you're having a, a very safe and enjoyable holiday. Um, Maps has been released uh, for Maui. Microsoft uh, definitely says Maui is great for GPS based apps. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello to you, Christian in Chile. How's it going there? Adam, hello. Eunice, how's it going there? Um, would it be cool to see a way to download photos, videos, and audio to Azure from Maui? I think you mean the other way. Post from Maui to Azure. Let me get some music playing here in the background. There we go. This is Stream Beats. This is music that is royalty-free, DMCA-free. You can use it wherever you'd like. Whether you're streaming on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, doesn't matter. It's completely free. Nobody's going to gonna throw you off the web for using it. And there's all kinds of groovy music in all, all different genres that you can check out. Go, head on over to streambeats.com. You can get the licenses. You can get the music if you like what you hear and you want to download and listen to it for yourself. Or you want to listen to it on a playlist like Amazon Music, Apple Music, or Spotify like I'm using here. Thank you so much to Harris Heller and his team of creators for putting this music together that we're listening to today. Um, am I able to read this message, says C. Family Lang. No, I'm not. I'm not able to read th that message. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, LOL, LOL. Hello to you. Just testing. Yep. Um, um, Gopalakrishnan. How's it going there? Um, Joseph asks, can an invoice be generated and printed just like a point of sales operate application with Maui for free without purchasing additional tools? Probably. I haven't tried it. I'm sure there's reporting tools that you can get to put into Maui. Um, if you're making a living off of building and generating invoices from that application, why wouldn't you want to pay for tools to help you have a great experience? If, if you're building and, and making money off of your application, don't you, don't you want to compensate the developers that helped get you there? Surely when you sell access to your application, you want those people to pay you for the application you built, right? So why not pay the developers who helped get you there? Um, da, 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 da. Can we start today's discussion in about 17 minutes? That's why the clock is there. Uh, will Maui ever be able to be utilized for Blazor Server and Blazor WebAssembly? Uh, no, Norman. Um, let's talk about what exactly Maui is. .NET Maui is the multi multi-platform application user interface. You're building a user interface. It's built building native client applications. That that's not a server side application like you would have with Blazor Server or Blazor WebAssembly. These are technologies that run natively on your Windows, Mac OS, iOS, or Android devices. Things like Blazor WebAssembly, Blazor server side run on a server and typically are being being served. There's a central point where they're dispersing and delivering HTML and user interface content for folks to be able to use. Where with .NET MAUI, you're going to some sort of an app store or you're going online and clicking a download link to download an application to install. So they're two different things here. They're two different application models. Hey there, Omar. Good morning to you. Um, I'm sorry, I can't read the, the script there. Is MAUI for phones or desktop? Yes, it's for both. Um, good morning to Brian in Mississippi. How you doing there? Um, yeah, serial printer pro protocol, the, the sim racers. Well, not just serial printer, but you might also generate a PDF and send that PDF to a printer device. Uh, hi, S. Hello. S is right there. Hi. How you doing? Um, 
So, how you doing there? Extreme Drone in Panama. Good to see you. Welcome in. I, it, I, I haven't... That's the first time I've spoken to a drone before. Um, hope you're doing well. I've got a little bit of coffee going here. The I, I'm doing the pumpkin spice. Right? And it, it's not pumpkin, but it's all the spices that you put in with the pumpkin-flavored things that you might find. So, right, the, the cinnamon, the, the nutmeg, all that stuff, it tastes delicious. Um, let me see here. MBTC Doge uh, says, .NET 7 is already in good condition to be used in production with Blazor. Um, .NET 7 is the next version of .NET, um, and it's going to be released one week from tomorrow at .NET Conf. .NET Conf is our annual virtual event that everybody's welcome to tune in and watch completely free. Um, and on the 8th, Tuesday the 8th, uh, 9 a 8 a.m. Pacific, we will, be, uh, we will be launching, we will be releasing .NET 7. That said, I think it's release candidate 2 is currently available. If you want to get started with Blazor and .NET 7 um, today, you're going to be in great shape. You will have support, and, and because it's a release candidate, in a week, when we tick over to the release version, you will be expected to migrate to the fully released version in order to continue support because it's the released version. So... I think you're you're in great condition to start a production app. I'm assuming you're not going to finish in a week, but to start development and start development and get into that cycle, I think you're going to be in in great shape. Um, RS asks, did the .NET maintainers have to collaborate with Apple and Android to get Maui to work natively with iOS and Android? Yes, they did. Um, they they do have things compile and run natively on both of those platforms. Um, Google and, and Apple have different approaches to collaborating with the team. Um, and I'll just leave it at that, but they, they are collaborating. They are working to make it as good as possible on those two platforms. Um, I want to know about Ubuntu or Linux support. Um, there, there currently is no Linux support. We're focusing on these uh, four platforms to start with .NET MAUI. This is a question we get a lot. Um, there is a community effort to build and deliver Linux support. It's growing. It's moving in the right direction. It's going to take some time to get there. Quite frankly, the, the Microsoft team is focused on those other four environments, four operating systems to start. Mac OS, iOS, Android, and Windows. When we have those working, then we can come back and reconsider uh, Linux. It's a the, the number of folks that that are looking for Maui support are orders of magnitude less than Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. So it, it, it was the fifth priority, and in order to meet deadlines, in order to get things shipped, it was cut. However, just like with other Linux projects, Linux user interface projects, they're encouraging and supporting an open source approach. To delivering. Gerald, good to see you. Wait, ready for some .NET Maui love? We're not we're not gonna go deep today. This is just an introduction session to, talking about the basics, get showing the initial templates, talking through those demos, how things work. So we're we're gonna be yeah, that's that's where we're going to be today. Um Charles asks VB.net support for .NET 7. Of course, there's VBNet support for .NET 7, yes. Um, you you can use VB.NET with .NET 7. Um, C Family Lang asks, is there going to be a tutorial on .NET 7? Um, so, .NET Conf next week, there are 80 sessions. I should bring up the .NET Conf website. We should bring up .NET Conf. Um, I was speaking to somebody um, yesterday. And yeah, and and I was explaining to them what .NET Conf was and the things going on there. Um, let's uh, let's head over here. Um, come on, come on back. Here it comes. 
There we go. We're back on this screen. Look at it. It's right over here. See, and it's it, my my camera's flipped. Uh, .NET Conf 2022. It is one week from tomorrow. All kinds of great stuff here. Some of our featured speakers listed here. Safia, David, Scott, uh, another guy named Scott, another guy named Scott, uh, Julia Casper, David Orton now, uh, Daniel Roth, Gaurav Seth. A lot of great stuff happening. This is the biggest .NET virtual event that you can find anywhere. This is where we're going to be announcing there's going to be all kinds of training around .NET 7 that will be made available as part of this event. I want you to tune in. I want you to check this out. Um, there's so much that you can see that you can ask questions about. We'll be taking questions live on Twitter. I want you to, to know that the team will be reading every question posted to Twitter. They might not all get accepted. They might not all make it on screen. But the team will be collecting and reading every question. And if there's if there's good questions that don't make it on screen, we're going to try and make sure that those get answered on blog posts in, in the week or so afterwards as well. All right? So lots of great stuff happening here. .NET Conf coming up next week. Uh, let me continue scrolling through... Um, through the messages here uh, is that Yasser Shara asking C sharp markup versus YAML perform versus XAML performance. Look at them. What am I saying? Um, is C sharp markup and XAML are the same thing when we talk about um, when we talk about Maui. So I'm not quite sure what you're asking there. Um, what's that question? Not yet. What's not yet on the roadmap? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Gerald. Uh, is there a Microsoft component library for Blazor or Maui? No. Um, there are community libraries that are available for Maui. There is a a, uh, a a community pack that you can find for Maui that have, has all kinds of great extensions. Um, the Microsoft team is not is purposely not building. Um, uh, let me go back to the, the chat screen. It's purposely not building libraries for, for Blazor and Maui because those are places for you, for the community, to get involved and build and, and grow the cool things that are out there. Now that timer just reset. Um, I need to reset that back to like 10 minutes. That's a reset. Let me reset that timer because I, I uh, stepped away and came back. So I'm going to reset that to 10 minutes. There we go. Um, um, hello to you, Vladimir in the Forbidden Lands. How ready is Maui to be used for rich interactive multimedia experiences? Interactive compendiums. What's an interactive compendium? Um, is it ready to be used for rich interactive multi... Yeah, I... W what do you mean by rich interactive multimedia... Can you play video with it? Yes. Can you show images and show them back and forth? Sure. Can you do uh, real-time animations and video and things? Uh, you're going to want to shell out and bring in some native code on those platforms to do that. So, is there a possibility of Maui overcoming Flutter? There's always a possibility. Flutter definitely got started and, and out the door quickly. Um, and quite frankly, a lot of folks who used to work on .NET and Visual Studio uh, left to work on that over at Google. Um, that's public knowledge. Um, so is Maui going to overcome it? It could. Maui's still in its first year. .NET Maui is only six months in production. We're very early in, in the discussion there, so... Is it going to get better? Is it going to deliver and, and be the end-all, be-all? Maybe. It, it took the better part of 10 years for React to become the, the very popular web framework that it is today. Where's .NET Maui going to be in 10 years? Don't know. 2032 is a long way out. Very long way out. Um, let's see, uh, Diaco, we're just talking, we're going to be talking about the basics of .NET MAUI and talking through some of the templates and code samples. Ozzy asks, will the conference be available to watch just after, just in case? Yes, everything for .NET Conf is recorded 
and will be available on YouTube afterwards. It'll probably be about available about a week later if you don't want to scrub through the entire stream. C Family Lang asks, can we use a MongoDB database with EF6? Um, I can't remember. I haven't I haven't done that. Um, but why when you can use native MongoDB interactions? So I'm I don't remember. I haven't been been down that path. I haven't worked with Mongo as much recently. Uh, or uh, Red5 asks, who is Maui's main competitor? Uh, the native development tools on those various stacks would be the main competitor. There are other cross-platform compilation tools like Flutter that are available. Uh, <clears throat> so you have choices, and choice is always a good thing for us as developers. For us as .NET developers, um, I hope you find Maui useful and something that you can choose to to use to build your applications. Um, our written house on Twitch says, I'm sure Google will cancel Flutter randomly in a few years. They do it to most things. Um, yes, you're right. They do. Given, um, given how successful Flutter is right now, I don't think they're going to be canceling it. Canceling it anytime soon. We could be surprised though. We could be surprised. Robert Tables on Twitch. How are you doing, my friend? Yeah, we hope our week starts... Your your week starts great as well. Um, Alexander asks, Maui versus Avalonia. What are, my main dif what are the main differences in my opinion? Avalonia, um, if I remember correctly, codes directly against painting um, pixels on the screen. Versus Maui renders real components. Um, uh, I... Avalonia, it, in, and I haven't spent anywhere near as much time with Avalonia. Um, Avalonia is built by a third party out there. You're going to see the the same types of um, keeping up with them as new frameworks are released for the various operating systems, for the various .NET versions as they are released. So you're going to be a, a half step behind with Avalonia as as new features come out for all the different uh, tools and technologies. Similarly with uh, Uno platform, you, you'll you'll be a, a half step behind on some of those, um, but it, it's that's part of the trade off for the flexibility of being able to develop with your favorite tools and technologies and have it go everywhere. You might not necessarily be right on the bleeding edge on day one, and that's okay. Um, not everybody delivers everything on day one, but you'll be able to get things out relatively soon afterwards. Those teams, when a new, when a new runtime version, when a new operating system, a new piece of hardware is going to be released, they kick it into overdrive. They work very hard, very, for very long hours to make sure they have support for the new devices as quickly as possible. New devices, new operating systems. Hey, Mythin. Um, can I say anything about the UI as code approach for Maui? Um, you're talking about Comet. No, I don't, I don't have any insight onto Comet. I haven't spent time with it. Um, we may talk more about that as we get later in this series of videos. Um, it's not something that, that I have experience with yet, but I definitely plan on spending some time with it to, to help, help with these types of series. C family Lang, I'm sorry, I did that, that is a little bit too specific for my knowledge. Hello to you, CM in India. Can Maui create iOS apps? Yes, it can. Mm -hmm. Um, Alexander, hello to you in Franconia. Um, is Maui a community thing or a Microsoft thing? It's a little bit of both. Maui is a framework that is shipped as part of .NET 6, uh, and later it'll be shipped as part of .NET 7 as well. Um, are you are you going to see community toolkits, community implementations to support and help folks build with it? Yes, there's already a very strong community toolkit that's been built, being maintained, and you're going to see other implementations to support .NET Maui coming up. We we already see folks asked about Linux. We already see folks building a Linux runtime to support .NET Maui. It's growing. It's it's. it's taking time to develop it 
it takes time for folks to build things. Um, how you doing there? Uh, is that is that uh, Guile Dev? Hello. Uh, Eric asks, does .NET MAUI offer a web platform option similar to Flutter, such as a single MAUI code base for progressive web apps, single page apps, etc., instead of the traditional mobile desktop application options? This is where MAUI with Blazor comes in. Build a Blazor application, you can put it inside your MAUI application, and it runs natively there. Take your Blazor application and throw it over into a, a standard web-hosted application, and you're off and running. Still building with Razor, building with C Sharp, and able to reference and include all of those libraries. There isn't a different target runtime in Maui that you can just switch on and go target. Um, hello, uh, Tal in Israel. Is it possible to build 3D games on Maui? I haven't tried, but I'm sure you, I'm, I'm sure you could. I think there's probably other platforms that you find that will do that a little bit better for you, but you could do that. Xamarin was purchased by Microsoft more than five years ago. Yes. Diaco likes Blazor. Should I always choose Maui Blazor or is there any drawbacks? There are some drawbacks to it. Um, and it's... It's not something that your typical user is going to pick up and see. Um, but developers, folks that have a keen eye, might see a little bit of a difference between them. But for typical forms over data, interacting with data types of uh, applications, you're going to be just fine. Uh, hey, Kung Fury Keyboard, it's not the same team um, because it, it's grown and changed and shifted. There's new engineers, there's new folks that have been hired, there's new people. It's now a Microsoft team. It's not, there are Xamarin folks that are off working in other parts of the company. It's not the same team. It's the same leadership, I would say, but same team is not giving, is not giving those folks enough credit for, for the things that they've accomplished and they've done. Um, and I wanna make sure that uh, we recognize, appreciate, and understand that. Um, all right, I think we are just about ready to go here. Um, I am taking a peek around real quick. Um, <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's all the things that I'm looking for here. Just grabbing my notes, yes. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's where I want to be. Um, all right. Yeah, there we go. Those were the the demos I was looking for. Um. Yeah, and look, absolutely, the, the, the genesis of .NET MAUI, without question, came from Xamarin. There were a lot of updates, there were a lot of changes, there was a lot of integration that needed to happen to get Xamarin, what were Xamarin things, into .NET 5 and .NET 6 to lay the groundwork for .NET MAUI to just be available for everybody to be able to interact with. So, all right. I am enjoying this coffee today, let me tell you. Oh, it feels so good. Um, just taking a peek here, making sure no messages from the family. I'm going to be staying over here at the desk where I've got a little bit more power to give demos and be able to interact with uh, the content we're going to be sharing here today. Um, and I want to take a look real quick. Um... And I think that's what I want. Yeah. Um, I need to change just one or two things here real quick. Uh, ta -da -ta -da, that I should have done. Um, Okay. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> so, no, I didn't want to do that. That's going to be annoying. I think that's going to be annoying. Ah, there it is. No, it's not going to let me do it. I'm trying to resize some of my zones here. There it is. That's the one I want. Um, Somewhere over... Where'd it go? There it is. There it is. Fantastic. Yeah. I think that's where we want to be. Uh, is Maui replacing WPF? No. Um, WinUI is where the Windows team is replacing, they, where they want to replace WPF. That said, WPF is still available. There's still investment being done on it. It's still being tuned and improved um, as part of .NET 6, .NET 7, and you're going to continue to get a great WPF development experience. So... Um, that said, should you build your next application with WPF, I would advise against it. I would, I would start to move towards .NET MAUI and the WinUI capabilities that you're going to get. Um, so just like WinForms, should you continue building with Windows Forms? It's available. It's not going to be deprecated, but it's, it's not where we recommend folks invest their time for building new applications. You can do it. And, and there's great support out there for it. We think there's better opportunities now. More modern application types. All right. I'm going to go over here. Let's go to the browser. I have a readme available here that we can use to get started introducing the topic of .NET MAUI. So let's go over here. Ah, look at that. Changing over. New screen. There it is. It's right over here. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to be talking about the the .NET multi-platform user interface, right? That's MAUI. That's that's what this thing is. And I copied some text into here and, and updated, changed it a little bit here. So this is a way for you to build with a single code base and deliver an application that works on just about any consumer device. Um, at least the popular models that are out there. So um, they, they built .NET MAUI to be the most productive way to develop native apps with a single code base that performs great on all of those devices. So instead of learning all the different stacks, right, the, the Mac OS Catalyst capabilities, the WinUI capabilities, iOS, Android capabilities, learn one set of APIs and interfaces and you'll be able to recompile and let .NET MAUI, let the runtime give you the appropriate tool on those different platforms. So this way, you can focus on building your application and not, how do I use this operating system? How do I get the most out of this operating system thing? Hooligan asks, is WinUI ready for prime time today? That's what they tell us. Yes, Windows UI for... For Windows 11, absolutely is. As a .NET developer, though, um, I'd rather have the abstraction so that I can build once and it just works everywhere. Um, the lowest OS requirement for WPF is Win 7, but MAUI on Win is Win 10. Yes, it is Windows 10. Yes. However, um, it, it, if you need a supported version of Windows, you need to be on Windows 10, basically, at this point. Uh, Billy asks, can I use MAUI without the user interface? Why? No, I don't think so. Is MAUI as fast as native applications? Uh, no, there is a little bit of a slowdown that, that happens because you're on, on MAUI. Um, for the types of applications that folks build with .NET MAUI, you won't notice it. The typical forms over data types of applications, you won't notice it. Um, CM asks, can I explain a single code base? Yes, we can do that. Hey, Ned, uh, we're on Windows today over here on the Visual Studio channel because we're, we're talking about .NET MAUI. We need to be on Windows in order to use 
.NET MAUI. So let's talk about what it means to be a single code base. I'm going to start a new .NET MAUI application here. So file new project. And we're going to choose a template that pops up here. Um, I already have it in my recent project templates over here at .NET MAUI app. So let's call this um, test. Eh, my first my first Maui app okay um sure that's fine so I'll put it on .NET 6 I will not be covering .NET 7 until after next week in fact I'll probably do a .NET 7 wrap up the week after after the the release um probably so what I mean by a single code base, well, stay tuned. I'll have more on that. This is one project, my first Maui app. And there are entries here for the various platforms that I can target. I can build and deliver for Android, iOS, Mac, Tizen for Windows. And I'm going to get an appropriate good experience on all of those platforms, building and working with my XAML files that are down here so if i just build and target a for a windows machine here it's going to build and and give me an application here that runs on windows so uh give it just a second there it is starting up and i get the default template here that runs on windows little image uh, home bar up at the top and I've got a little button here that as I click it it just shows a little counter here that it's incrementing it also works on Android and it looks and feels similar now let's see if I can get this working <laughs> I have the Android uh, subsystem for Windows installed and it's not popping up um, so here it is starting my Android emulator and it's going to it is running and I should get it building and deploying over to this app to this device over here so the first time it builds always takes a little bit of extra time going over to Android but we should get the exact same app running in both places let me catch up with some more of the questions here while we're waiting for for this so there it goes deploying and we should have it running in a second um shoko says it's really hard to install maui maui check etc and then all these errors coming with the installation will there be an easy way like blazer server um the newer versions of maui particularly with visual studio have everything installed and when you opt into it it should all appear and load properly for you the first time the fact of the matter is there's a lot of moving pieces to install and run all these emulators all these tools there's the app running um and we should see the splash screen and it tick over to the user interface here uh there it is so the exact same app and it does the exact same click and count thing so you built it once there's one set of code here and here's the XAML for it, a vertical stack layout with that .NET bot image, the hello world text right there, a label, welcome to .NET multi-platform app UI, and a button that has a clicked event handler here. And I can navigate through to that. And as I click it, it updates the label. Done. There's also a announcement to a screen reader if there's a screen reader engaged it will announce the count on the button so one code base and it compiled and worked for both android and windows now i'm on windows if i was over on my on my mac i could get this running for mac os and for ios um but we're going to be on windows today in a future episode we'll work on mac and and i'll show you it working over there as well but uh, we're in a good place where it's working for both of these. That, for me as a developer, being able to write one set of code and it just works on the various clients, that's huge. I don't, I don't, I don't have to think about all of those things. 
Um, Agujan asks, is it easy to make a mobile application with Maui? Um, I just did it. I just, I just started it. There's, there's my Android emulator. So yes, yes, it is. Claudio asks, on Mac OS systems, .NET MAUI is an alternative to Uno platform. They both compete in the same space. Yes, I wouldn't. They're alternatives to each other. Sure. A single code base is enough to develop for Mac OS Catalyst, iOS, iPad OS, Android, and Apple Watch. Yes. Yes, it is. Data Goose with a question, does .NET MAUI transpile to various machines, native code, or does not work differently? Yeah, thank you. Gerald jumps in there. It's not transpiling. It's building a native app. So it takes our .NET code. And if you think about how .NET code works, when you write .NET code, it compiles just like Java does to byte, uh, I'm sorry, to byte code, right? To intermediate layer code that is then at runtime compiled and runs for that appropriate operating system it's running on. Not just the operating system, but the processor. We're talking about ARM, 64-bit, 32-bit um, Intel-based processors, right? The, the x86 and x64 instruction sets. So .NET, in this case, is not doing, not necessarily, depending on where you're targeting, is not doing that just-in-time compilation. For <clears throat> for iOS, it does a full it, compilation all the way down to the machine language, to the assembly language that's going to run on that device. When we're working on Windows, when we're working on Android, there is a, that, that last bit of just-in-time compilation that happens because of it, and Mac OS as well. So, um, yeah, Maui check is a thing of the past. Thank you, Gerald. Yes. Um... How you doing there? Uh, Addy from India. Hello. Hammer. How's it going there? Uh, no UI preview, preview for XAML says Sector 2350. So um, we do have, and I'm running on the Android emulator, but we do have hot reload here. So I can I can change the, the, the text and things. I can interact with that, right? So let's see if I put these two side by side, right? Let's see if we can do, do this demo, right? Um, right, it says, hello world. I can change this to, uh, say, uh, I'm learning, uh, no, leave it, leave that one. This one. Let's replace this label. Uh, I'm learning C sharp with C sharp frets. And when I save that, it will hot reload, deploy that and update the user interface. Uh, for me, do I have hot, did I have hot reload turned on? Um, so it should patch and it should appear there inside my Android application. It, it, no code changes were found. Yeah, I know. I changed. I changed the label. Do I need to restart that? It shouldn't have, it make me restart. The whole point of the hot reload was that it was going to. Right, if I do that. No, it's not updating. All right. Let's try it over on Windows. Let's try this on Windows. Windows machine. So, uh, but there is no UI preview. No. The goal is for you to use hot reload so that you get you get that that interaction that um, is actually a little bit faster and easier to work with. So let me scroll these back and forth. Um, hello there, YouTube and Twitch. Yeah, my hot reload isn't working here at all for me. That's disappointing. Um, I'm guessing that's something on my install, and because I'm not running .NET 7, even though I've got all the patches and updates, um, it's supposed to hot reload those things. Let me continue catching up here with chat. Um, you did that, but it's not showing in the templates. 
in order to get it into the templates in Visual Studio 2022, you need to make sure. Let's let's cover that real quick. You need to install .NET Maui. And look, I've even got an update available. I'm not going to apply the update. But in order to get everything in the mix here, you need to add the .NET multi-platform app UI development. When you click in, when you click that on, you get .NET Maui, uh, .NET Framework 472 development. Uh, um, and I also make sure I go over here and turn on Intel Hardware Accelerated Execution Manager, the local install for that. Uh, image and 3D model editors for gaming. I didn't know that's not. Where is it? Um, I'm looking for the Android emulator. Uh, um, Android SDK setup, Open JDK for uh, from Microsoft. That's our Java implementation. But the Maui SDK for Android, the .NET SDK. Um, the Google's Android emulator you can turn on and install theirs. But uh, you get our Android emulator as well. So make sure you have that installed and you should get all the templates lighting up for you. Um, <laughs> let me see here. Uh, Groundstop says, I've never heard of Tizen. What is it? Tizen is a, an operating system that's built by our friends at Samsung. They use it in some of their devices, um, uh, flip phones, um, various, uh, um, various hardware. Um, you think about a, a refrigerator that has an operating system running on it. Um, that's Tizen, right? Places where you see Samsung running an operating system that isn't Android, that's Tizen. So, um, it's a, it's a smaller, um, operating system that they maintain and develop. Anton asks, is it possible to target on a Linux custom CPU architecture if you have, have a compiled .NET for it? With the, um, with the tools that the community are building, you might be able to do it. I haven't tried it yet. No more Android Studio. Exactly. One tool set, be able to build and target everywhere. Uh, does it work with .NET Core 5? No. .NET 6. Um, and you should be on .NET 6. .NET 5, it goes out of support, or it did go out of support, just a few months ago. Um, let me see here. Uh... From .NET 5, move to .NET 6. Yes, .NET 6 is very stable. Um, how where do you install the Android subsystem for Windows? It's... Um, where is it? It is... Uh, uh, I don't think it's in the Windows features. Um... It, there is a settings app that becomes available, but I forget exactly. It's in the app store, I thought, was where you had to go get it, if I remember correctly. Um, no. Is that where it is? Windows subsystem for Linux. No, I don't think it's here. I can't remember if there was a switch or something there. Oh, look who's here. Look who's here. Oh, thank you, Gerald, for for the moderation there. Um, with Windows 11, you'll get this um, application that you'll be able to launch, turn on, and get it get it running. It tells me that it's running. It tells me that it's out here, um, and it tells me 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's not picking up in in Visual Studio. I should be able to. I should be able to find it in my list of uh, Android devices here, and it's only the one showing up. Um, if I try to relaunch that, I'm not sure I'm going to get it popping up, but. We'll give it a try. See if I can get it to show up here. Get it to recognize all the things. And... No. Come on. Nope, it's not there. Okay. I'm not going to be able to use that today. Uh, is it possible to, uh, uh, I already talked about that. Um, as an interface uh, designer available for .NET MAUI as an alternative for, X for XAML designer? No. Just like for web development? No. <clears throat> um, I think there should be, but the direction that a lot of, um, user, inter user interface developers went is they don't want it. Will it be possible to design a user interface by using a graphical toolbox? Not at this time, no. No. Um, function style reminds you of .NET Framework? Yes, that's exactly the type of direction and support that we're trying to enable. Will we be able to use CSS to design? Let's talk about that. Is it different for Blazor Hybrid? Let's talk about that. So, let's talk about the Blazor hybrid experience. So let's add a new project to the mix. And this time I'm going to use a .NET MAUI Blazor app. Okay. So um, I'll call this uh, my Blazor MAUI app. And this time it's going to create, I'm going to get a, uh, thanks. I, I appreciate you opening the CS project file. I don't, I feel like looking at the code in a CS proj file is like is like looking under an unmade bed and finding all the stuff underneath the bed. Old shoes and slippers and dust bunnies and things the cat left there. Ugh. Um so uh, okay, that's a thing. It's underneath there, but um so the Blazer app pops up and uh, sure enough you have a main page XAML here that looks like XAML. It's got that XAML content here, but instead of it having all the things to run an application, it's got one thing here. It's got a Blazor web view, and we're going to set up and run Blazor in the same way that you might run Node inside of an Electron-based app. Similar approach. So this time, let's put a character turn there so you can see it. Um, it's going to initialize a Blazor web view. There's root components. Just like inside of a Blazor app, we have a root level component. Well, this is telling it, here's your root level component. Go find this thing called app. And the content is going to be something called main. And if we go back over here, there's a main.razor file. And this is, this is the jump off point. This is the pivot from Maui, from Maui to Blazor. This is just like in a Blazor application, that router that you might have in app.razor that starts off and shows how routing and the various interactions occur with inside your application. Now, inside a Blazor Maui application, you don't have an address bar. So folks aren't going to be just clicking a link in or, or clicking it into an address bar and typing whatever to get to some location. They're going to be navigating to locations that you specify. So this is going to start out with something called main layout. Sounds fam Does that sound familiar, Blazor developers? And when I look at main layout, um, right? That's over here. I have a main layout that's being included for all of my applications. And it looks like Razor. I have a body tag here where we're going to 
inject our content, right? I've got a little bit of a navigation bar here. I've got a nav menu up here that'll appear on a sidebar. This is all being loaded on top of a web page. And that web page has all of the appropriate content for us, including to the question earlier, CSS, so you can style with CSS. So I've got the same capabilities that I had before with Blazor, right? The typical counter example that we're used to seeing with a current count and an increment count method down here in a code block in an on click uh, attribute that's hanging on an HTML button that when I click it, it's going to execute that C sharp code and, and repaint that element. So very cool stuff. All right. Before I go any further here, I, I, I hope, and you've probably seen, I have the restream bot turned on. So it's relaying messages across the two platforms to each other. How's that working for you, chat? Is that, do, is that something you're enjoying? Is that something you're finding valuable so that you can see what everybody's saying on both YouTube and Twitch? Let me know there in chat. I, I want to make sure that you're having a good experience. Um, um, do, 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 do. Is it, this is Blazor Hybrid. Um, same code for Android, iOS, and Windows is pretty cool. Yes, it is. Um, Apple Watch TV OS and smart TV platforms. I'm not familiar with building for the smart TV platforms. Um, but Apple Watch, you should be able to target. Um, Unix systems are not currently supported. Are different Maui apps, uh, do they share the runtime on the same device? No, it gets packaged and shipped, deliver it. Um, Yep, there are r fixes roughly every month with bug fix it releases every month with bug fixes. Yeah, it's it's being iterated on quickly. Thank you, Joe, for helping out here. We need a .NET roadmap. There is one, and you can you can clearly see it. It's open source and available um, on GitHub. GitHub.com/slash/dotnet. I believe it's on the home repository. Um. Uh, .NET Foundation, no, no, no. Um, ba, 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 ba. I'm thinking .NET Runtime. Um, useful links, foundation, license, um, roadmap. There you go. The current release schedule, upcoming ship dates, feedback, um, the product roadmap is over here. And you can see exactly what's being built and when it's going to ship. So, the and this is all pulled from GitHub. Everything for .NET is open source and visible out here for you to be able to interact with. So, I'm going to grab that roadmap link and share that. Yeah, themes of .NET is, a, is that second page that I jumped through to. And you can choose a release version and you'll be able to see exactly what's being targeted for those things. So. All right. Um, yes, Blazor Hybrid's built on top of .NET MAUI. The, and the Blazor web view that you're going to see me use here. This is available for WPF and Windows Forms. So the things that I'm going to do with this here, you can do with Windows Forms with WPF so that you can take your Blazor app and move it where you'd like. Maybe you're maybe you're not maybe you're not confident with .NET MAUI, maybe you don't need all of those capabilities. Maybe you've got a um, maybe you've got a Windows Forms app you want to migrate to .NET MAUI. You can use Blazor as a step as a as a step stepping stone. Yeah, that's that's a good word. <clears throat> so migrate a, a couple a screen or two to Blazor, and then you can lift up that Blazor content and drop it into .NET Maui as you're migrating and getting things moving. 
Um, docs about developing .NET MAUI apps on Mac OS. Um, there's all kinds of material on learn.microsoft.com is where we're pushing. Should be exactly the same. Yep. Uh, is there something like stateless, stateful widgets like Flutter? Uh, XAML Live Preview hasn't worked at, at, at all for me here, Gerald. It, it is not popping up at all for me. Um, so I've, I've tried three different demos with it, and it hasn't worked on Android or Windows applications with .NET MAUI. But I expect XAML Live Preview to work, and it's not at all. Um, maybe it's my install. How can I run an iOS, iOS device emulator on Windows 11? Ask Claudia. You can't. Yeah, the iOS simulator only works on Mac, but you can plug in your iPhone, and you can work and deploy to your phone. Um, are different Maui apps share the runtime? No, they do not. Nope. So, is it possible to fully style a .NET Maui app using CSS? Uh, it's not possible to fully style a .NET MAUI app using CSS. XAML styles can be... Yeah, that's responding to... Uh, Samsung TVs run on Tizen. Yep. Will this work in Harmony OS? No. Um, seriously, uh, do we have some updated documentation regarding native bindings in MAUI? Um, yes, there is documentation there. Um... There is documentation there. You should be able to find it with the rest of the docs on learn.microsoft.com. Um, <laughs> um, so at this time, C Sharp and .NET 6 can be used to develop apps for back-end, front-end, and mobile. And I hope the future and interface designer for .NET MAUI. Right. So let's start this application. So I'll run the... Uh, I'm on... I started the wrong one. I forgot to change that from my first app, MAUI app. Yes, yes, yes. Can I cancel the build? It got there before me. Um, let me change that. Jump over to my uh, Blazor Maui app, and I'll run that on Windows. And this time... This time it's going to build and host a Blazor application. Now, I think, for those of you that are web developers like me, this should look familiar. I get the hello world experience and the appearance of the blazer content. It's even fetching, it's not really fetching data, it's loading a JSON document. Um, and about jumps me out and takes me into the, the documentation here for ASP.NET. But it looks like a native app, but it's a it's hosting whatever the native browser is on that platform. And this is a big difference from how Electron works. Electron packages and ships Chromium. This packages and ships a reference to whatever the native browser is. So when I press F12 here, I get the native browser on Windows, and that's Microsoft Edge. If I was doing this on Android, I get Chrome. If I do this on Mac or iOS, I get Safari. So, you have a little bit different behavior than when you package and deliver Electron. Because you're, you're statically linked to a version of Chrome. You can't patch and update Chrome. But, what MAUI does is it binds and loads a component that acts as a, as a traffic cop. It hands over, it delegates to whatever the browser is on that platform. Consequently, when the browser is updated, your application gets an updated version of that browser. So you don't end up with applications that have any kind of security gap because they're running an old version of Chrome that hasn't been patched because the application developer hasn't released a new version of the application with the patched version of Chrome. See how that chase kind of happens? So you end up with a better maintained experience using this approach with Blazor on .NET MAUI. Let me catch up with some more things here. Uh, yes, Windows subsystem for Android is only available in selected regions right now, but it's not loading for me at all right now. Um, have to add the Amazon store to get the Android subsystem. Um, 
there's the Amazon App Store on this machine. But it's still not loading, right? If I go Windows Store or Microsoft Store, I forget what, they're, what they call it. Um, <laughs> there. So add this and, and it might trigger it for you. I, it's been forever since I've done it. So, um, what do I think about Blazor Maui for, for, uh, Marcin? It's a brilliant solution. I wonder why Maui is not so popular. Um, Maui's very young. It's very new. Folks are still getting, getting their feet wet for, with it. Um, and, and the experience does have some rough edges and it's improving every month. So, um, and I, I love the idea of being able to take my, my Blazor app and, and turning it native. Take some of my Blazor components, share them from my Blazor WebAssembly application, and put them into .NET MAUI. Lots you can do there. Um, is Blazor on the front end as fast as JavaScript? Depends. Depends on what you're using. If you're doing machine learning algorithms, if you're processing... 3D models, if you're doing some very intense math, it's faster because it's running natively. JavaScript is always interpreted and is always going to end up running slower for those types of um, processor intensive interactions. JavaScript though, interacting with the DOM is always going to, is going to be faster as WebAssembly improves um i'm sorry sarosh that's not a question for me i'm not going to answer that question um dot net dot net maui is at a 1.0 release and it's improving all the time um are different maui apps share the same you keep asking this question zushi no they do not when you ship a maui app it packages everything to run that app with it to deliver and run there. Does Blazor replace Cordova? No, Cordova is completely different. Cordova is, um, Cord for those of you who don't know, Apache Cordova was a way to build applications that hosted a browser frame on mobile platforms. Um, Electron-based apps were the next evolution of that where you bundled a node runtime with a Chrome frame to ship. The next evolution that, that I would propose on that is um, the, the Blazor web view, which will launch and host Blazor, but you can also stick HTML with JavaScript in there as well. Um, our friend Alyssa Nykold does a bunch of really cool presentations where she takes an Android application, uh, an Angular application and puts it into a Blazor hybrid application so she can run Angular on Mac, iOS, Android, Windows as a native application. Are there uh, documents detailing Microsoft's identity with, into Maui? Yes. Check it out. LearnMicrosoft.com. Is .NET 7 out in November? Asks Hammer. Yes, it is. Uh, one week from tomorrow, .NET 7 is released. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Gerald, for jump, jumping in and answering a bunch of questions here. Does this work with Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code? Visual Studio. Um, yeah, only thing about Maui Blazor is the user interface. Everything else, you it will jump across from uh, Blazor to native Maui um, without any, any code changes. It's a little bit weird. A little take it'll take you back um, as a Blazor developer the first time you look at that. Uh, can I use Material UI for styling a Maui app? Sure. Will this be on YouTube to watch later? Yes. Uh, lots of good questions here today, and I kind of expected that and didn't want to go deep on too much of this. Um, there are, are places in Maui APIs where void-based class methods can be overwritten and made async. Will those APIs eventually be made, be changed to use? You're asking, I, I'm sorry, I don't know that kind of low-level roadmap. I'm sorry. Um, yes, YouTube is filling up the Twitch chat. Um, 
and YouTube has been pretty quiet today as, as far as the trolls. Instead of JavaScript, now C Sharp? Yes, exactly, Atari Monk. Yep, why not? And as WebAssembly grows and gets better, why not whatever language you enjoy, not just C Sharp? Much better than answering questions on one platform. And Okay, the, the question about the Restream bot. Fantastic. I'm glad you, you're liking that. Um, which means also... Hang on. Does that mean I can use Featured Chat and be able to pick up from both platforms? Stand by. Because I think... Do I have Featured Chat on this screen? I do. Let's see. Let's see if we can get that turned on. And I'll jump over to here. Um, yeah, so I can pick up Restream Bot saying something here as well. Um, um, my gosh, lots of questions. Um, right, so so I can. Where is it? It's it's not. Hello, I can hear you. I know you're here. It's it's the wrong featured chat. Um, where's the other featured chat? I have two featured chats. Because why have one when you can have two? Um, burr, burr, burr. But yeah, I could use featured chat here. I'm gonna I'm going to tune and work on that, and I'll I will get that running again here. My goodness, that's great. Um, if that's causing the weird emoji bug, no, no, because it, I'm getting your YouTube message directly. The restream bot isn't changing your messages. Uh, what, what does ground stop? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can we use Maui blazer to present a blazer server app? No. So let's talk about how this works for a second. I'm not even going to get to showing in any of the images and things, and that's okay. This isn't actually hosting a web application. It looks like a web application, but it's not actually a website. There is no Kestrel running here. It's installing and using the Blazor web view. It's, it's well, if we were in the web view developer, in debug, we get the developer tools loaded up. But it's not actually presenting to you a, a web server that you're navigating around and having things render and all that stuff. It's rendering and doing this stuff all in memory. There is, right, there, there is no navigation back and forth to some web address and doing something. It's just navigating around on a, a faux web server that's just presenting content. Okay. Very cool stuff. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yes, you can share Blazor components across the two platforms. So, um, how do you work with storage in Maui? So there is there there is um, storage tools that you can use to go back and forth there. Um, but System IO namespace will map and give you space appropriately. Is this to essentially substitute JavaScript with C Sharp on server side? Server end server, in browser, and native client. Can Maui work with a Honeywell handheld PC? The kind they use? I'm not familiar with that device. Do, does it run Android? Then yes. I don't know, though. Can it be deployed to a serverless platform? Well, on a serverless platform, you're going to want to deploy Blazor as a static website. Yes, you can do that. You use Maui with a Honeywell CT60. There is an SDK from Honeywell for Xamarin that works with .NET Maui. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Um, cool. Thank you, Gerald, for grabbing that link about the authentication. Um, Sachin is a .NET Core web developer trying to learn Maui, but it's very difficult to learn Maui. Any tips to make it easy? Use Blazor. Um... Where can I find the entire C Sharp series by Fritz? Um, I, I'm going to grab that link because I, that's, I think, the second or third time I've gotten that. Um, so I'm going to go right to the front of 
here. Um, this is the GitHub. Um, yeah, that's fine. You, you don't really need the tree 60601, but there's a link here for the entire playlist on the YouTube channel. Click through to that and you will see everything that I've covered with C-sharp. Um, ASP.NET, Blazor, console development, C-sharp basics. Um, there are 63 videos available out here for you. So covering uh, a year and a half. No, not even. Uh, 15 months of development that we've been doing here. Um, let me see. Continuing to scroll. Um, so we can have a Blazor web app and a Blazor Maui app and shared Blazor web components library. Yes, Sector. Yes, and that's something that I've gotten working on on uh, the application that I build on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Clip Talk, I, I don't want to ship it right now. I've got other issues there that are going to keep me from doing that. Um, what are the big apps using Maui out there? Um, I'm not a good person to answer that question, and it's still early. Folks are still building this. You're going to hear more about those, particularly next week at .NET Conf. When should we choose uh, Blazor Maui instead of .NET Maui? When you're more comfortable building web applications. Otherwise, if you're comfortable with XAML, if you enjoy using XAML, then choose the XAML approach. As a web person, I like Blazor. Will we have Maui more Maui sessions with me? Yes. I plan on doing at least four sessions, maybe as many as six. We'll see how it goes. Do I think it's a good approach to use C-sharp instead of XAML to create interfaces in MAUI? You're talking about Comet, and that question has come up several times here. It's, it's a question of preference. Comet is very early in its development, um, where the XAML interpreter and rendering is something that's been around for a very long time. So I would suggest um, you're, you're being more on the bleeding edge when you choose to work with Comet. Uh, no, .NET 7 is not LTS. .NET 8 will be LTS. .NET 7 is what we call an STS now, a short-term support. Uh, no, standard-term support that has 18 months of support behind it. So, um, yeah, it, there's the, the apps that we can share with the public that are using .NET MAUI are... They're not things that we can we can disclose without those customers say so. So that's right, Morse. Uh, only even numbered versions are long term support version. Is it possible to use native ver features across o operating systems with Maui? Yes. So there is there are ways that you can go and include. And I'm not terribly familiar with the native tools on each of these operating systems, but if I go into Windows, I can include and bring in stuff in my manifest. I can change my application and bring in things that are specific to Windows here. And you see it's a partial class. It'll get merged and it'll pick up those Windows specific features and so on and so forth. And we'll talk more about that in a future episode here. Um... A uh, resource device about UI design with .NET MAUI? Our friend Gerald that's there has a bunch of amazing videos about .NET MAUI. Check out his um, his channel. They, if you're focused just on .NET MAUI, and I'm, I'm just doing the beginner stuff, just introduce it. But if you want to get into an intermediate or advanced level, check out Gerald's content. He's got some awesome content out there for you. So... All right, so I, I was showing here the Blazor content. I do want to show a little bit more about how you can you can take this, right? And I still have the application over here running. Um, right, and it's, it's showing that fetch data page, weather forecast, right? Um, let's see if I, uh, we're learning. That's caps lock. We're learning uh, C Sharp with... C sharp. Fritz, get rid of that at sign. And yeah, I'm not getting hot reload working at all here, Gerald. 
Um, it is, yeah, yeah, it's not picking up and running at all. Um, yeah, thank you. There's Gerald's link. So there's got to be something misconfigured here on my machine or I'm running an older version. I do use preview versions of Visual Studio. You can see the preview label there. I might have a version where this is uh, where this is broken. That's okay. If I was running an RTM version and this wasn't working, I'd be a little more upset. But I suspect I'm running a preview version that doesn't have... That, that, where something might have broken along the way here. <coughs> um, so if I want to make this a little bit more .NET MAUI-ish, instead of using a, a very web-ish navigation bar here, I could use a tabbed page coming out of um, coming out of Maui. How can you create a mobile application car sharing? Um, that's a make a mobile application. I've shown you how you can do it, but to get it to car share, it's a little bit further than my knowledge. I'd have to Google that or Bingle it or Google it with Bing or even DuckDuckGo. Um, so I'm going to move that address bar over there, the navigation bar, turn that into uh, some uh, some tabs here, so we we get a little bit more hybrid into our application here. So I'm going to close. Uh, yeah, close everything but this one. And inside my Blazor app here, let me go down into the not the program, this one. Um, yeah, close everything else but this one. So I just have the this Blazor web view that says I'm hosted in index and we're going to load up this component. I'm going to shift this a little bit. And I, instead of it just being, here's a really big browser. Let's instead have it have it give me a tabbed page. Right? Um, not a content page up here, but a tabbed page. That's where it is. There you go. And I can also now bring in and right, so I have I have my local reference here that's going to give me access to all of the local capabilities inside all the local things that are inside my app. I also want to be able to get a reference to the pages that are in here. So I'm going to put another, oh, come on. There we go. Um, I, I don't know where I'm jumping into caps lock mode here. Um, but I'm going to reference the pages and be able to say, um, right, uh, CLR namespace, right, and uh, this is my Blazor Maui app, yeah, pages, right? So now I've got a reference that I can reach into and tinker with just those pages. Um, hang on one second here. Um, when when family texts me, I want to make sure that they're they, they get a response, but especially folks that don't text me too much while I'm broadcasting. Um, so I'm going to change this. So I now have a reference to the pages, but we blazer web view doesn't sit as a child of a tabbed page. Instead, I have to place content pages. So let's place a content page here and I'll give it a title. I'll have it go to the home page, put a little bit of padding around that. And this time, I will look at this. Um, this is GitHub Copilot suggesting to me that hey, maybe you want to put this content in here. No, I don't want to put that content in there. Um, this time, I want to take and put my Blazor web view in here. I want it to host at index HTML, but instead of the um, root component selector is the app, but instead of it going to the main where it's going to have the router in there. I'm going to instead have it bring up my index page. Come here, you. So now I don't get the navigation bar on the side or on the top. Instead, I'm just going to get the index page and I'm going to create two more of those here. Let's get rid of this blazer web view. So I'm, I'm getting even more hybrid, right? 
This one I will change to the counter and instead of going to the index, I'll have it go to, I had it, thank you. And this one I'll have it go to fetch data and I will call it fetch data. Last thing that I need to do to make sure that this works, see where this is a content page? It's now a tabbed page in the code behind that goes with it. So now, instead of having just that one browser and I'm navigating and doing everything inside that browser, I've now got three browsers and an appropriate one pops up and it's already navigated to a Blazor page appropriately using those native tabs on each operating system. Have a good one, Gerald. Thank you so much for stopping in. Um, so now when I run this, come here, you. Now I've got that same hello world, welcome to your new app inside of my Windows application. And I have a Windows menu bar across the top. And I get the same content as I navigate around. If I take this over to Android, uh, there it is. So I'm just going to pivot and choose the Pixel 5 emulator. Where I had a tab bar across the top, here comes my Pixel 5. Come on. I have it restarted. Because I shut down the emulator, it's restarting it. There we go. And then it'll deploy. Yes, running. Thank you. And it's Android. But we'll see that app be deployed here in just a second. Come on. My machine is extremely busy. There, you can see down on the bottom. You can't see it down on the bottom. It's just underneath my, my screen here. I have it cut off. It says, deploying to pixel. See it there? Um, and just Windows Forms, that's okay. If you like Windows Forms, more power to you. So, found the device. We should see it deploy in just a second here. Um, there it is. Here it comes. Uh, can I access the tutorial after the live streaming? Sure. Check out the the GitHub for this. There we go. There's the, the bits there. Um, I'll post that GitHub link one more time. So, the same app. I, uh, you see the border around the tabbed page here. But there's the tabs, and it loads, and it goes to those various components. And I've still got the exact same interaction. I've gotten rid of the web navigation. Cool. I have options now to, to jump the, that boundary between my, my browser-based implementation, which is all very webish, to something that is a little bit native and a little bit web. So, um, I don't know about Rider. I'm, I don't work on Rider. Is UWP replaced with Maui now? UWP is replaced with WinUI 3, and .NET Maui compiles to, U, uh, to WinUI 3. So it doesn't replace it, but it allows you to build and target those same things that UWP turned into. I, I hope that it, it's, it, it doesn't replace it, but it's where we recommend you go, and, and the replacement is WinUI 3. Any feature to use something like an attribute at the top of the component to tell it to render at the client side or server side? There is no client and server here. This is native on the device. Nothing's running. There, there is no server here. And, the, and, and I, 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 I need to make this a... a FAQ answer because this is about the 10th time we've gotten this question. No current plans for Maui to support Linux. There is a community effort to build a Linux runtime that will be supported by .NET Maui. 
It's not currently being built by Microsoft. So we've got this running and it runs here inside my, my Android emulator. I mentioned that we can kind of cross the boundary between native and web user interface. So I can do some interesting things from inside my pages. So if I go over here to the home page, right in that home page is sitting right here, right? And it's got this survey in it. This is my first Blazor Maui application. And I'm going to need to restart. My hot reload isn't working here. Um, yeah, it's not working for me. But I can put some other capabilities in here. So, like, right, I can put... I can put buttons. And I'm going to do the check internet demo here. So just like in Blazor, I'm going to write some code, right? Uh, async task, check the internet connection. And I can now go do something here that would interact with the device, but I'm inside Blazor, right? I'm not... I'm going to be able to jump the, the border between the two. So let's do this. I'm going to do a quick check. Do we have an internet connection? So I can say uh, connectivity, right? That's not something that you find in Blazor. And I can say current dot. Let's check the network access. And uh, I can say if the current connection is network access internet, then we have the internet. Um, I can further check the connection type by inspecting a little bit here. I can say uh, connectivity. There we go. Um, connection profiles. Let's take a look at the first profile if there is one. If there isn't one, then I don't know what that connection profile is. Finally, um, let's let's display an alert. So I can do something like uh, await. Um, I right. So this is uh, my Blazor Maui app, right? Um, app, the current running app. Uh, main page. There we go. So I need I need to get over to the main page, not display the action sheet. We want to display an alert. And uh, I'm going to put some information here. Title is going to be Internet Status. My message is going to be um, Has Internet. And I'll just drop in the Has Internet. And the connection type is going to be my connection type. Um, finally, I need a cancel button at the bottom that just says okay done yep rebuild and apply that and it's going to go over and it's going to run inside my android app is hot reload on save file yes it is it is and it's not picking it up for some reason um is blazor web assembly uh enough to for it to use in or should you learn Blazor Server 2 for learning Maui. Um, Blazor WebAssembly, learning that, your skills will transfer to .NET Maui. It runs in a different place. It's not running in a browser. It's running kind of next to and being rendered into the browser. So here it is. It's deploying again. Uh, did a lot happen? No. Am I going to get into the Maui shell? Yes. Not today, but we will. You just started your first Maui project. Awesome, prog testing. All the best to you. So this is my first blazer. Ah, oh, I spelled it wrong. Oh, gosh. See if I save that. Oh, is it going to? 
Yeah, it's building and redeploying. <laughs> so... We should see that in just a second. Spelled right now. So now if I click check internet, has internet, and it thinks it's a cellular connection because I'm, I'm in my little emulator here. So I can close that. If I go into... If I go into... That's not the thing. Um, where is it? Right if I go over... I'm not an Android person. Um, <laughs> is it this way? There it is. Um, and if I turn off internet here, right? Uh, turn this off. Yep, that's a, that's fine. Turn off Wi-Fi also. So I'm I'm completely. Um, and I go back over. I'm completely disconnected inside the emulator. Check the internet at this time, and I don't have internet. So this is, right, this is how, as Blazor developers, we can now jump between native app and web app. I can build components that can be referenced and used inside this application that runs over here. And I can still reuse and reference those components inside my Blazor application. And we'll talk more about that and how we can take advantage of some of these things as we talk, talk more about Blazor and Maui next time. So I am out of time here. I'm going to jump back over to this view. Um, that went a lot better than, than I expected. I'm, I'm really happy with, with how we went through there. Lots of good questions. Some folks are very deep into the topic already, and we are staying at a very beginner level. We want to get folks started. We want to give you a good jump off point and get you interested in learning more about the topic. Um, so there's there's lots more coming. There's lots more that you can do. Let me answer a few more questions as we wrap up here. Um, Alan asks, uh, is Windows Store written using UWP, WinUI, or MAUI? It's written using WinUI. They, the Windows Store, they kind of use as a template app that shows what they need to and can do with the various versions of Windows application uh, libraries. Uh, let me turn off that that timer there. We don't need to see um, the timer. There we go. Um, so Aaron on YouTube says, I just started my first MAUI app with .NET 7, Release Candidate 2, and C Sharp 11, build a building, a, building a little market data and charting thing. Very cool. Congratulations to you, Aaron. I hope you have a, a very successful project. Developer underscore 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 asks, can we deploy to iOS or do we need a Mac? You need a Mac. Sorry. Or there are ways that you can get Mac Mac uh, devices in the cloud. Um, GitHub Actions have Mac devices av available for you to allow you to compile um, an iOS application. But you, you will probably need to lease time on those. It's not necessarily going to uh, be completely free with GitHub Actions because it's a limited resource. Um, is .NET MAUI for ready for production? Asks uh, Heinrich. Um, yes, it is fully supported with .NET 6. Um, there are places that it could use some help. There are some places where there are things that are being improved, performance improved, uh, features being added all the time. So for some applications, very ready for production. For others, not quite yet, but it's growing. Um, yeah, that's kind of the Apple tax. You're right, Morse. Um, uh, is there any online help for Microsoft for Maui as an individual developer? Yes, learn.microsoft.com. Um, a structural question, is it better to build for the older versions of Win 10 with Xamarin and later redeploy with Maui or straight up use Maui? Um, for older versions of Windows, it, um, you can, you can build with Maui for Windows 10 and it will deploy. You can run it there. However, um, if you need to go further back than that, I would choose WPF or Windows Forms. Um, do, do, do. is App Center still the preferred service for deploying apps for beta or do you still need the unique ID for iOS devices? Um, if you have an iOS device, you can build and run locally. 
Um, there's more to come about App Center. You'll learn more about that next week at .NET Conf. I need to call it a day. That's all the time we have for right now. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a lot of fun <clears throat> hanging with you, talking about .NET Maui. We're going to get more into the nuts and bolts and how to use this in two weeks. It might even be three weeks. But in, in, in at least two weeks, we'll be back. Next week is .NET Conf. Tune in right here, whether you're on YouTube, youtube.com slash .NET. You're on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Visual Studio. You're going to be able to see not just three days of content. We've got four. Next Monday is our Education Zone. We've got six hours of content that we're going to air two different times of the day that's great for beginners. We're going to show you how to build your first web app. We're going to show you how to get started with your GitHub account, get GitHub actions set up, get your GitHub profile set up, all kinds of things to help you learn about getting downloaded with .NET, started with .NET, and build your first applications. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, it's all .NET. We're going to be showing on day one, introducing .NET 7 to you. All kinds of great things that are going to happen that day. And we've got windows of content, groups of content, where you're going to see some of your favorite technology sessions back to back to back. You want to see Blazor? There's going to be two hours of Blazor content. You want to see cloud content? Two hours straight of cloud content. Client development? We've got two hours straight of that too. Great stuff that you can tune in on Tuesday. Wednesday, we start a 24-hour live event. I don't care what time zone you're in, you're going to find people that are local to you in your time zone speaking and teaching about .NET going 32 hours straight starting at 8 a.m. on Tuesday. Actually, it's 33 hours straight, isn't it? 8 a.m. On, on Wednesday, 8 a.m. Pacific time going right through to 5 p.m. on Thursday Pacific time. It is a huge event the largest .NET training event that you can find anywhere on the internet. And I hope you tune in and join us next week for .NET Con. All right, friends on YouTube, that's all for me. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I've got lots more great videos for you that are available, all kinds of training materials. Check out the .NET channel just below me here, and you might have some great videos over there as well. Those of you that are watching on Twitch, it's time for a raid. Let's see who else is streaming on the big Twitch TV network that I can get you connected with that has some other cool creative and .NET content that we can join. We can uh, jump into taking a look around the horn over there on Twitch. I'm going to send you over to... I'm going to send you over to our friends on the Code It Live channel. They're developing with designers. They're, they've got some designer folks that are doing some software development. So we are going to raid our friends from Progress Software, Progress Software on Coded Live. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. My name is Jeff Fritz. You can find me tomorrow morning on the C Sharp Fritz channel on Twitch. I'll be over there writing some code with Blazor, building a Blazor application that runs on Azure. Um, it's a static web application that we've been having a lot of fun with that shows videos to you in a social media friendly kind of way called Clip Talk. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Uh, all the best to you and your projects, and we'll see you tomorrow.